Do I look different today? No, not this shirt. This shirt is it's great. New NMO coming out soon, but uh, I'm actually filming on a brand new camera. You guys seeing the difference or? Even though it looks like these cameras, both of these are the same cameras. They are not, don't be fooled. The outside looks the same, the insides, very different. So I'm gonna vlog with this, film some footage. Let's see how good the FX30 is. <laughs> So what's your first impressions of the footage? Is it looking like a baby cinema camera or not? And while we're checking out the B-roll, I have a massive discount for you, 50% off a yearly subscription at Epidemic Sound. Yes, you heard that right, 50% off, which I feel like rarely happens. Just use the code MADDIE50, and this actually expires October 4th, so you wanna use this right now. Probably, I'd say 99% of the music you hear on my channel is from Epidemic Sound, because they have one of the biggest high-quality libraries of music. I go through a ton of music making two to three videos a week, and I'm actually surprised that I'm consistently able to find music I like. But they also have really good tools to find music easily. For example, their AI tools to suggest similar songs, or even choosing a specific part of a song that you like and getting more recommendations that fit that vibe. If you've been eyeing Epidemic Sound or thinking about getting better music for your videos, there has never been a better time with 50% off. Remember, that's not lasting long, expires October 4th. Thanks so much Epidemic Sound for sponsoring this video. Just realized that the 120 has a massive crop, like pretty big crop. We're already dealing with a crop, now we have another crop. Also, say hi to Alan, guys. What's up, everyone? How's it going? Alan's the best. <laughs> He's the most mysterious man I know. <laughs> Mysteriously here. He's every. He's everywhere and nowhere. I never I see him, so. and then I'm in like Milan, and he's just like, I'm here, I'm like, oh, <laughs> Houdini. It looks super stealthy though, I like this. Are you, you're on Canon nowadays, right? I am, the R5. Is Canon gonna be pissed that I'm filming you with a Sony right now? You know what, I look better <laughs> on this camera than on my own, so. <laughs> it's pretty good, it's not bad. What do you guys think so far? What's the image looking like? I dig it, it's nice. I think it's pretty nice. Come on, get in the workout. Hang on. This is how you just eat. <laughs> So this camera is an APS-C size sensor camera. So the, it might look like an FX3, but the internals are completely different. And there's some pluses and minuses to that. One being um, the price <laughs> is a definite positive, and then some quality low light issues. Um, hold on a second, we're just gonna record well, a quick podcast. Hello there. Hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> is that the podcast voice? Yeah, that's the <laughs> everyone has like a. Hi everyone, and <laughs> welcome to Maddie's podcast. We're back. Podcast. Before we compare these footage, let's just start off with the prices. So the FX3, which is my favorite camera, or the A7S3, it costs $3,900. The FX30 costs $1,800. That's a really big difference. Uh, $2,200, I believe, with the XLR mount handle thing, which is really great, especially if you're using XLR microphones or anything like that. But let's go into the comparison knowing that price difference. Comparing the footage here side by side, I'm actually really impressed by how similar 
the colors and the overall image looks. You, you definitely see um, there's a difference in the bokeh, the background blur, but um, these are both f1.4 lenses and I'd say the FX30 looks pretty nice with the shallow depth of field. Not quite as good as the full frame, obviously, but the colors, these are the exact same color grades and like no problems matching those at all. And, and I think that's what you would be doing is one of these, like you have uh, an FX3 or an A7S3 as your main camera. Let's say you shoot weddings or, you know, little commercials or whatever. And then of course you need a B camera because if things go bad or you just need a second angle, like on an interview like this, you could buy the FX30 and it matches perfectly, like no problems at all. You could have uh, the exact same color grade over the whole thing, boom, done, easy. But because it is an APS-C size sensor, um, once we start pushing the low light, it's clearly not as good as the FX3, like not even close. Um, and I believe the dual, there's a dual native ISO, but it's like 800 is the base ISO of the FX30. Uh, on the FX3, it's 6. 40, which is a slight difference there. But the dual ISO on the FX3 is 12,800, whereas on the FX30, I think it's 2,500. But it also didn't seem like a drastic difference. Um, I was trying to flip through and see where you see like the crazy difference in the noise. And it kind of didn't seem like a big, big difference to me. There was also this weird light bleed thing happening with these tube lights of mine when I would cycle through the ISOs. It would almost, I would have this little bleeding thing, but then it would also change the color of those. So I don't know if that's like a, just a bug that's happening. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but just something to be aware of. Overall though, I'm very impressed with how well these two cameras match because I, I really do think it's, it's more of a B camera. But also if you're, you know, you can't afford the FX3, which is quite expensive, um, this is a really, really nice alternative. And you get to use the smaller, cheaper lenses and all that too. But I am a little bit bummed that it's not a smaller body. You know, usually APS-C size cameras are smaller and I feel like they could have made it smaller. There's a, there's a weight difference, but it looks <laughs> exactly like the FX3. Now, granted, Sony cameras are pretty small already as it is, but yeah, it would have been nice. Very impressed with how well they match, especially because of that massive price difference. Alan, you were great on the podcast. Thank you, bro. I very much appreciated that. <laughs> that was... I tried. Podcasts are my favorite. We just get to hang out, talk, catch up, Drink all that Red stuff. Bull. Drink Red Bull. <laughs> the good old stuff, you know? <laughs> Alan, dude. It's been real. Thanks for coming over. Good to have you. I missed you. Oh, good to have me. Good to have <laughs> you. I'll see you. <laughs> Same thing. Come again for the podcast. I'll see you, um, Austin? In, in Japan. Abu Dhabi? Probably in Austin. <laughs> I don't run into these things. <laughs> Just finished the podcast with uh, Alan Palander, and that made me think that this might actually be one of the best podcast cameras, especially with that XLR mic handle thing. I've just been straight up plugging these <laughs> into the C500. But um, the other day we had an, an episode with uh, Becky and Chris, and so there's two of them. And, and so we had one of the XLRs just plugged into the FX3. And so this FX30 might be a really, really nice podcast camera because it looks so good, but it's also much more affordable. So you can buy a few of them for the price of one FX3. And even though this is a crop sensor camera, we do still get uh, 120 frames per second in 4K, which I did realize is a crop. And we do get 240 frames per second in 1080. So you have that if you want it. Pretty nice quality still, usable. Um, but of course, it's a cheaper camera, so you know, you're know you not gonna get all of the bells and whistles um, that you'd get in the FX3. All right, what'd you guys think? FX30, seems like a pretty capable camera to me. I'd recommend for 1800 bucks. That's a good deal. All right, well done, Sony. Guys, just keep pumping them out. See ya.